Thank you so much for tuning into the Woman to Woman podcast, a conversation for women like you, smart, successful, curious, and interested in being your best self. Join both Sarah and I as we discuss topics that women our age are actually interested in, with both of us being candid and often having differing views. As coaches, we sprinkle in advice and tips, along with humor and vulnerability. We hope you feel like a fly on the wall with two friends. Let entertain and inform you and welcome you into our friendship. We appreciate you pressing play and spending some time with us wherever you are in the world. Let the magic happen. In today's episode, we are talking about sex. After watching Sex, Love and Goop on Netflix, it's a mini series from Gwyneth Paltrow, we decided that it was a pretty good topic to mention in our podcast because our podcast is really all about uh, the entire journey of being a woman from 35 to 50. So the idea is, was really to bring to you that beautiful topic. So we are commenting on the show. So if you haven't watched it, it's a really, really good show. You can seriously take some time to watch. Um, and we are discussing about the topic that are happening. So we, we explain to you what is it. We're gonna have also for you the link for to perform the test. So the test that we have done and we are talking about in the in this episode. This topic really inspired us. So we are ready to go on a series about sex. So stay tuned. This is the first episode and enjoy the time with us. Hey Angela, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm so good and I love your hair. You straightened it for us. <laughs> yes, it's like, um, yeah, we, we had a discussion together yesterday about that and I was thinking, why not showing everyone what is uh, Sarah with straightened hair? Um, and so, did you get to watch um, Goop Love and Sex, the TV show I, I recommended to you? Yes, I have started. I haven't finished it yet. And the first episode, um, I watched the first episode alone. And, um, and I thought that was so interesting because it teaches a lot of things things that I already know, so I'm glad to know some of those things, but there are other stuff that I don't know. And I feel that it's really, it's really towards women, and, um, but yet I wanted my husband to watch with me. So that's why I haven't finished yet, because for us to find some time to watch a new episode, it takes, a, it, it takes some time, but now we're watching it together, and he really like it as well. He's really, you know, I think he's learning as well things, about women and um, and what I like about my relationship with Teddy actually is that we can talk easily about those stuff you know and that that is really really um, it did not start it our relationship did not start it this way um, but it's just a few years back well yeah we managed to, to, to start conversation about sex and about our sex life so it was really, um, I, I like having this kind of open conversation and yes, I can feel myself, you know, I'm not sure if you're going to share with me and us, but you know, the first time that this kind of conversation happened, you were like, oh, what am I supposed to say? What am I supposed to, to feel or what am I supposed to, you know, is, is it normal that I have some resistance talking about that? or not you know and i could feel myself getting out of my comfort zone you know like not talking about that and 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 i felt this in comfort and comfort um and then actually i just pushed myself a little bit because i deserve you know to have good sex and if i keep things for myself then i won't you know get what i want so then after that conversation started and then we try out a few things. So let's see how it's gonna, how it's gonna be for that uh, podcast. Tell me about you. How did you, tell me about what you feel about the show and, and if it has impacted any way your life. 
Okay. Um, well, I love the show. You know, I love Goop. Um, I think it's really important to talk about, like, you know, I really, and it's kind of, um, Goop is about having conversations, particularly their podcast. I mean, I certainly don't follow everything and this television show. And I actually feel like what we're doing is a spring off that kind of thing. I love the type of conversations they have. They talk about things that people are thinking about but not talking about. I mean, obviously, life in general is so much better now. We talk about more things. But um, sex is something we still don't talk about a lot. And this show um certainly introduces you know i mean i think the main thing like what i got out of the show the most is that sex is not just intercourse or you know what's it before foreplay and you know it can really it's not just that sort of what we know as sex um which is i'm assuming i will be asexual because you know i'm a heterosexual person and i do like that way of having sex but i definitely think that there's a wider world out there and you know i i've listened to further podcasts about the show you know with the experts and i think the overwhelming theme is you know kissing touching blah 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 intercourse that's not just sex. There's a whole other world. Um, and I am really excited to take the blueprint. I've been meaning to do it. And I, you know, you were one of my friends and I wanted to talk about it. And I was like, watch this show and then let's talk about it. So I think we're going to do the test together. I would love to see, you know, I think Gwyneth and some of, you know, one of the women on the show is like, oh my God, I came out as kinky and energetic. You know, I thought I'd be sexual, you know, because sexual is kind of like the mainstream, what we know as sex. Whereas I think there's five or six types. So definitely, even if I come out as one, you know, um, as sexual, my other one won't be. And I'd like to know what it is, you know, is it more visual or fantasy? I can have a bit of a guess. I don't think it would be energetic. Um, and yeah, so I want to explore that. I'm super, I think, Sex is a part of wellness, to be really honest. Um, the same way as financial wellness is a part of wellness. And these are things that people are like, oh, it's taboo, you know, we shouldn't want money, we shouldn't want sex, we shouldn't want to express ourselves. But I actually feel very differently to that. Um, and, and I think sort of eating well leads to having a better relationship to your body, leads to having better sex, all these things. Like they're all very oh. intertwined. <clears throat> and I don't know if you got, I was actually quite disappointed in the show about how they did represent the older couple, um, which is just constantly the same shit, you know, um, like the older people, they had them there, but I really didn't feel like they explored it. But it, there's so much, I'm going totally off topic, but yes, I loved it. Um, I loved that one of the couples also dived into like the psychological aspect of sex and I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. Did, did it impact your your sex life in a way or another or is just for you more, more awareness or just because you like this kind of conversation because you're always keen to discover new things i mean how what was the impact on your life? okay so i i i like talking about sex with my partner um i mean of course it's a little bit uncomfortable but you know at the beginning but no I like talking about sex with my partner it actually hasn't changed as in I haven't really explored I mean energetic to me is the one that's kind of like oh you know like I do like touch and um massage and I'm all into that and I'm all into you know doing what makes them happy or me but I haven't ever like energetically got turned on um so no that's what i'd perhaps like to explore uh that's the one i'm probably the most interested in and just like i don't really get it um i do get being aroused by not um touching necessarily but you have to be i don't know that's the one i don't really get um and i am so so no i haven't i have it hasn't really changed how we're having sex. No, not yet. No. Yeah, I don't think it would. But, you know, I feel that with um, with my husband, you know, if we were to find someone to teach us something else, 
uh, about sex, so going for a sex therapy. Um, not that we have problem, but just to discover, just in the in the um, in the ob uh, in the sense of discovering, you know, something new that we we don't feel comfortable trying on our own, you know, because we don't know or stuff like that. That probably I think that would be an experience, an adventure that we would try. I mean, I would try that. Um, I need to talk about. Guys, will be up <laughs> How many episodes have you watched? Because it was a little while ago uh, when I watched it. I think I've watched four um, so far. So I've have seen definitely. Seen have, have you seen them have energetic sex together? The the um, the. That was that was mind blowing. Have Seriously, you, that yeah. was mind blowing. And then, so it reminded us something actually with my husband. It reminded us something that you a year ago maybe, uh, yeah, we tried something out of the blue. Seriously, we didn't know how it, it came out. But there is the tantric breathing. So mm -hmm. tantra is, you know, is how would you we describe the tantra? T tantra is um, the art of making love um, and being co energetically connected with your partner. So this is what Tantra is. So there are lots of exercises and I took a course with that and, and I loved it. Seriously, I loved the course. And, um, and so there is this very basic exercise that is the tantra, uh, tantra breathing or Tantric breathing. It depends. Some people are using both. And it's connecting the breathing at the same pace. Okay. And did seriously. they do that? Did one couple do something like that? I think they did, didn't they? Uh, I think, at, uh, I can't remember. The lesbian maybe, the young lesbian uh, couple. I think they did it. So they did something similar, I think. But, and the thing is that it's, it was a beautiful experience, trust me. We still remember that experience. Um, no, inter no intercourse, nothing, just that. And we were on, totally on. And there are some other beliefs as well around turned sex. Turned on, you mean? I turned mean on, but turned he turned on. on. Yeah. We both turned completely on, just with that. Um, and then but after that, there were movements, that. but no. Uh, I think I did. I don't think he did. Uh, but you there is a without having sex. Yes, yes. So that's I'm what. Yeah. Well, that's, that's an energetic right. thing. It and is it, it's it's completely, completely energetic. So that's why when we watched the show and we were like, okay, we know what it is. We already experienced not like her in the show because it's just mind blowing, but we could feel what she could, what she felt during. Um, that moment in the show because we had also a, a similar experience in the past. So, and just by connecting the breathing. So this is, I mean, her style really gave us like the desire to try something this way. Um, but let's see, maybe let's do the test. Let's do the test can and I, see. Can I just ask one question? Oh, yes, please. So Go ahead. Why would you do that once and not again? Ooh, this is going um, back to my. Um, oh, you don't have to answer if you don't no, want. It's, it's not, it's, no, it's not. No, 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 no. It's not that. It's because it's a good question, and um, we don't even know how it happens at first. We don't even know. We didn't plan everything, and I remember at that time I was having my period when it happened. So definitely, I, I would not go on, you know, on a sexual really, you know, sex having sex, intercourse sex, um, while I have my period. I know some people practice that, I'm not. It's just that I'm not this kind of person. So I just don't like that. So in this way, I don't know, I was, I was the desire, I was having this desire at that time. It was a moment, it was just a moment. I can't tell you how it happened at first, um, and then why we did not do it, I guess that the moment did not, come back probably it's just that so I don't know it's a good question All right. um, he yeah, asked me the same okay. he said why we did, did not try to do it again I can't answer that to be honest I just don't know the moment was not there and I'm not forcing myself all right so let's um, do the sorry, test so we're gonna take, yeah we're gonna take the uh, blueprint 
test and then we'll come back afterwards and tell people but we'll also um, in the show notes link to the test now this test tells you what your sexual blueprint is for me it reminds me a little bit of human design which tells you the blueprint you know of your personality and your energy so i actually really think these kind of tests can be really helpful to enlighten you know things about you and as usual you know you take the information with a grain of salt and they're to be tried out do you know what i mean like if i come out energetic you know for 40 years i've not been having sex properly or not you know not to the extent that i can so it's just to you know um widen your curiosity and give you more things to explore and see if it resonates so it's, i'm very excited let's do it okay okay sarah did you get yours i got my results finally all right so here's what i knew i knew what i would be Oh, seriously, and I guess that you would easily guess what am I? <laughs> Are you energetic? Are you sexual? <laughs> yes, I knew. Yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, it's interesting. I would not. I mean, you can feel. You can feel already the answers about. You know what is. Um, what what goes towards your type? Because all the questions are classified the same way. I mean, all the answers are classified the same way. So you would probably feel. So, yes, I think you know what I'm interesting to pay for. Um, so for everyone, there are two versions of the quiz. There is one small quiz, which is going to give you the blueprint. And there is a paid version, which is giving you much more depth on, um, on all the energetics and what is a percentage for each, you know, because you are not only one. You are a mix of everything, but of course, more and more dominant about um, about yourself. Um, so, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna do it later on the paid version. But yes, tell me, tell me, tell me, what is this said about sexuals? Tell me. So we're turned on by simplicity, nudity, and straightforward sex. I imagine she's got it's crossed out. Um, when you, when you want sex, you're ready for it. Having sex helps you conquer the world. If you and your partner don't climax, you might feel something's wrong. That's not true. You're left frustrated. Um, I would say, I don't know if I should say this, but I would say if I'm having sex a lot, I don't, um, oh, like if I have the sex more than a couple of times a day, I probably won't climax every single time. It's fine with me. Okay. Um, did you know has superpowers? So my superpowers, you love sex, orgasms, and neither reg regions. Yeah. You're fun to play with. Yes. You're easy to arouse and can go from zero to 60 very quickly. Yes. Um, uh, my shadow aspects are you get too focused on the end goal and therefore miss the journey. No, you may feel upset if an orgasm as doesn't happen for everyone involved. No, that doesn't really happen for, you know, um, sometimes you can be self-focused and clueless as to what your lover needs. Not really. Um, not really, no. Um, particularly as you get older, do you know what I mean? Um, I definitely know what I need, but I like to, you know, it's two way street. Um, you might have a limited definition of what sex is, leaving out the other blueprints. Definitely. That's true. Um, you are fed by direct genital attention, erotic visual stimulus, nudity being physical and sexual frequency. Um, sexuals tend to be the cultural norm for men. Well, also for women sometimes. Um, do you want me to keep going? Or? Well, uh, I don't know. Do you have more than that? Oh, yes, there is a lot, indeed. There's a lot, yeah. but okay, you just read, you read um, what yours is, because yours is more interesting to me. You know, I'm, I'm very normal, do you know what I mean? I'm super heterosexual, I'm just sexual, like I'm pretty normal when it comes to this stuff. Um, okay. Like, you know, not normal, but what is out there. I'm not as complicated, you know, as... 
Okay, so uh, my energy type is the energetic type. Um, but before I talk about that, um, would you ask your partner to do the test or not? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. Um, because I ask, um, actually, my husband to do, uh, to do the test. So I don't know yet his answer. So I am an energy type. I am turned on by anticipation, tease, space, and energy play. <laughs> I might already have um, dabbled in sexual practices such as Tantra and Taoist practices to explore my energetic side. So, okay, so what are my superpower? Um, my superpower, very, very sensitive and intuitive. I can orgasm without even being touched, and I value love and emotional connection. My shadow aspect can short circuit if touch isn't timed right. Uh, may not be able to concentrate on pleasure if something seems off with a partner. And can get hierarchically my way is better and more enlightened than yours. <laughs> That's funny. Um, it's funny because... Uh, they, it, is that true? It Are is, it true? is. I mean, very, very sensitive and intuitive, yes. I can orga orgasm without being touched, yes, 100%. Uh, does my way is better and more enlightening than yours? No, I've, not, I've never seen myself thinking this way, so I may, may probably watch my thoughts. Um, uh, if you want a relationship where you intimately crave for each other, da -da -da, then the blueprint, yeah. I mean, apparently the, the, the um, paid version seems to give you as well some, um, you know, tips on how to uh, work better with that. But yes, I'm an energetic type. Interesting. I mean, so interesting. tell me the, what are the shadow aspects? Or did you so read that already? I did, I did already. So the shadow aspect is that I can okay. short circuit if I'm not touch, if the touch is not in the right time. Um, and then I can focus on something else when something is off, you know, when I feel I can just turn off completely. I knew this was my first one, but I definitely have another side and I wanted to know what my second was. And if you watch the show, like everyone else gets two, but here we only got one. Yes, of course. I think that's also the, 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 the point of, you know, getting the paid uh, version. But yeah, I think, I, to be honest, I think I'll do it, you know, especially if I get yeah, more tips, especially to, because the sexual we know what is it is it is the intercourse so it, and it's good um so how do you awaken the others so the same way as you want yeah. to know what's your secondary you know because i know how to do that one and i like that one but i want to you know awaken other ones i see you kinky but just say <laughs> yeah maybe i like touch and i like I'm good with the visuals and stuff. I like that, like imagining or, you know, in different, you know, like, you know, when you pretend you don't know each other and you're going places and stuff. I like that kind of play. Yeah. Have you played that already? I have. I have. Or like having sex in different places. Is, but that's still sexual, I imagine, is it? No, I don't know. No, I don't think so. Or like being caught or you know doing it around people and stuff like i like that kind of thing that's still i don't know i don't know what that one is wow i really look forward to know more because it's it's i love this topic as well it's and it's so important to know yourself in bed maybe not in bed wherever you want to have sex by the way but it's yeah. i feel it's so important because it's a moment of joy and I just want to add something that I have learned and experienced as well. So in energy field, all right, in the energy um, healing and when you start tapping into energies, actually we, um, we are saying that when a man um, e e ejaculates, right, he's putting all his vital force into the sperm and so once it's out he's completely drained does not have any energy and i'm not sure if you felt that but with my partner is we we we, we know that for years we find we we 
it was we were making jokes about that we did not know it was related to energies by the way and on the opposite side when a woman has an orgasm actually it's she's fed she's fed she, she's she's fed with the energy you know and she wants to talk she wants to do she wants to accomplish she wants to create and and I, I did, we discovered that actually with my husband many years ago where you know every time we would have sex at night time um, you know I was having this kind of frustration afterwards where I wanted to talk I wanted to do this I wanted to do that but it was late already night you know and and he would just completely fall asleep and I felt like I oh, know I want that you know connection afterwards you know I want that and that's why I was trying to talk to him and then I could feel that he could just not take it you know it was literally drained even if we would even try you know to be with me and to try to get on that conversation it was just off already you know it was gone you know and so this is where it's very um, interesting because when I started learning energy and that is the explanation is just that it when a man goes completely I mean when when a man goes to the end he's actually releasing all his vital force and when a woman is not it's just receiving that vital force somehow okay um in, in um in a gay couple in the energetics will be different okay it, it, it would be different and it's a really heavily heavily practice in the energy environment that a man should not ejaculate not at all I mean not at all once in a while but most of the time he should practice sex without yeah. ejaculating because it it really deplete all his energy and that may not be as good um, as that because we don't want to deplete our energy and so it's it's recommended in um, so there is a, um, a family in medical Qigong, in Qigong there is this family where there is this teacher who is teaching all about sex and sex around energies, right? And um, and definitely he's mentioning that. Um, not he, but it's something that I experienced myself, is that when the, the, the man is not going up to the end, then his energy is preserved and he does not feel necessarily frustration that's the beauty of it it does not have to come to no, yeah, no one does. to yeah. you know to enjoy to it get um to enjoy it exactly so i mean this is definitely i mean i like this kind of topics it does not mean that you know sometimes we have to come what about it. the men who can just go and go and go like they don't tend to you know give up all their energy what about those types what do you mean? When the man is, is is getting, you know, once after another? Yeah. What's the explanation for those guys? <laughs> I can't tell. I can't tell. Um, I can't tell about them. Um, okay, I've got a question, and we might not. We might not post. We might not. Um, publicate this one but I've got a question because I I maybe have never asked a woman this right that and I don't know I'm not a man so I don't know a man's experience but you know how a man can just have sex come like always do you know what I mean for yeah. me an orgasm is like it's like a gift like I have it ranges from like getting a pencil to like getting a Porsche do you know what I mean like I don't know which one I'm going to get. I don't know. Is, do you know what I mean? Like, it can be like a, like it's not always, there's no such thing as the same orgasm for me. It is, it's a range. It is like literally every single thing that you could find in a shop. Do you know what I mean? It's small, big, long. 
amazing one I've never had before one you know I have quite often like I just I can't explain it it's like there's a huge menu of different ones I don't know which one's coming you know it's like a surprise doesn't I can't always orgasm even though I'm super enjoying myself I don't know like it's is that what it is for every woman you don't know which one you're gonna get it's you can't you I mean there are there are things that can everyone I, um, have you ever asked anyone that before? No, I've never asked that before, but I have actually experienced that myself. It's true. And there is this belief, you know, and especially when you, I would not say when you're young, but when you're young in a relationship with someone, right? And you, you are discovering yourself and then suddenly, boom, that position, that specific moment, you got, you got the Porsche, right? Definitely. You got it. <laughs> and that was, you know, and that's good. And then what is happening is that the couple are trying to reproduce exactly what happened in the previous time because they got a Porsche, right? And so they're trying to reproduce and the Porsche is not coming and they got, you know, the pencil case, you know, it's literally it's that. And you don't know what is happening at that moment. Why? We did exactly the same thing. We did that. I mean, did, you ha did that happen to you that you were trying to replicate because at that moment was no. so beautiful and magical. You never tried to replicate, never. Oh, man. So what I'm talking about is very different than what you're talking about. You're talking about an experience together. I'm talking okay. about just my own experience. Oh. So, you're, oh. so I'm talking only about female orgasms, I guess. I know what you mean about the position say and you both get a Porsche but I'm talking just from my own perspective that even no. every orgasm is very different and I don't always and I'm not but gonna do you, I don't necessarily... okay so do you get orgasm I mean when you talk about this one is with a partner or with your hair with yourself <laughs> I, don't, I mean with a partner I mean both I mean both but what I mean I just mean that I imagine, I don't know, that men's orgasm is always the same. And I, I don't, is it not? Maybe, and that, and I'm talking about with a partner and on their own. I don't know. Yeah. I just, I don't I, feel I like there's enough discussion about orgasms are always different. It I, is, I but I feel that I am actually talking about the same thing. It's just like, you know, I mean, what I, what happened to me, okay is that i was having that beautiful moment and i had my own orgasm i don't care about what happened to the other at that moment it's me you know it's well, an orgasm it, is it's just one person. Body. Yeah. exactly and so the thing is that myself intentionally on the following time you know because i found out that this was really lighting me on you know and i tried to get the same sensation the next time I was, um, the next time I was. But the thing is that it did not happen the same way. And it, you know, well, when I, I was say, expecting, uh, when I was expecting to get, then it's different, exactly. And you need to accept that. There's nothing wrong with that, but you need to accept that. And seriously, get out of your head. Don't try to reproduce that once was good, the following time may be even better. Or guess what? Oh, I'm not. No the, the thing <laughs> is, is just why, why is there no conversation around orgasms always being very different? They're not always the same. I just feel like no one talks about that. And, 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 and you know how you say, like, you know, talking makes you feel like you're not alone. I've actually always wondered if the women always have a different experience as well, or is an orgasm always quite similar? I guess it's just something I'm interested in. And and that I didn't know if that was just me or if everyone had that experience. No, I, I would agree with you. I would definitely agree with you. I know by experiencing what turns me on. I know, you know, if I want, if I really want to add that orgasm, I know what it's gonna, I mean, I know how to get it either on my own or with my with my husband but 
it won't feel the same way all the time even though i know where is the the g-spot if we call it like this it just depends where it's yours even yeah but um i know what kind of touch i like and um how i like it to light me on but it won't necessarily happen the same way in the i mean it won't fail necessarily the intensity it's more about the intensity the intensity will always be different and i would believe that it's mainly because of what is going on with your life you know and all those things you know if you do this in the morning or if you do that at the end of the day you know if your day has been good if you've been frustrated if you've been interrupted here and there you know and i think this also has an impact on the intensity of your orgasm yeah. Also, very much times of the month affect me. And there's probably times of the month when, you know, I That's can't really as much or it's harder. I, that one I definitely am aware of. But I feel like life impacts me less. In a relationship, the behavior of my partner highly impacts my desire for sex, though, um, to a degree. Yeah. Anyway, so I just wanted to bring that up because no one talks about that. It is the intensity, but it feels like a lot more than intensity. And for me, you know, it doesn't matter if I keep taking to the same road. I definitely don't get to the same destination. And I just, I don't. And I, I actually, I like that. But I just feel like no one that I know talks about that. Well, yes, it's true. Conversation about sex is not coming at the dinner time already, always. Um, yeah, but we all know why. I mean, it's full of taboo. I mean, he here in Malaysia, I think people would like me, like, would look like me. Uh, not everyone. I mean, some are quite open, actually. I have, I have a friend and um, she, is, she is okay to talk about it with me. I'm not sure she would talk about it with everyone, but she's okay to talk about this with me, oh, and I and I, I and I like it. I like it. Yeah. I really. I mean, would I talk about sex with everyone? Well, I'm talking about sex with you, allowing many people to <laughs> to listen to it, and that's a big step. But it's the more normalized the more we normalize that kind of conversation the more it becomes normal and not any more taboo because there are so many things to discover and by the way the show um sex love and goop i mean it, it does cover only what it's going on for those four couples but there are so totally many different. there yeah. are differences but there are even more differences out there definitely but the other thing that I, and I think I mentioned it before, the biggest thing that sex, love and goop has taught me is that an orgasm is not sex. Do you know what I mean? It's even those moments just brushing past each other or talking or spooning in bed, which I think a lot of people do. I mean, and then there's a whole conversation about people not having sex. Then there's a whole conversation about, I think a lot of people don't orgasm, like a lot of women. I mean, there's just all these, like still what we're talking about is actually pretty acceptable and like, oh yes, you know, like I don't orgasm every time, but everyone's like, yes, have sex, intercourse, orgasm. That's not actually, I think the conversation, we're actually, you know, in some ways shortening the conversation because I, there's a big conversation about couples not having sex anymore, huge. There's, and you know, the other thing that I don't think I knew a lot about, but I was watching um, a dating show and not a dating show, but something kind of about dating or relationships or something. And people were talking about being a demisexual, I think a gray sexual or an asexual. And these are people who are like legitimately don't have sex in their lives. And they were talking, now I'm going to have to find it so we can link it down here. It was an Australian show though. Um, but I found it really interesting that, do you know what a grey sexual is? I think like a grey sexual, no, no, like an that? asexual doesn't want to have sex. But this show was talking about all of these people that either have had sex, like, you know, they're looking for relationships, but not sex-based ones, which... 
that's a whole thing as well. Okay. They are definitely not sexual <laughs> blueprint. But the other thing is they might, they might have chosen to be asexual because maybe they're none of those, like because they thought that was their only option. And then maybe they can look from the other blueprint options and you know, there's a there's a lot of conversations to have and you know, and not um, making anyone feel bad who might be an asexual or things, but you know, that's something that I didn't really know about. Um, and yeah, and and yeah. that's a definitely a section of the popularity uh, population as well. So yeah. anyway, it's yeah. just interesting, and, you know, and I yeah. don't want to talk about it, just one small section of it, but I don't I don't know a lot about the other ones. And uh, what I'd like to emphasize actually is that, um, and I was thinking about it when you were talking, is orgasm is not necessary sex you know it's not the end goal goal and 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 i remember sometimes where you know i was not having one but i still enjoy it right and my my oh, husband yeah. was like yeah but you, you you didn't have one and i'm like yeah but i don't need to have one i'm good i feel good i feel good and that's it you know i just don't have the need and i know that for men or I can't. It, it shows them that they may not be performing well. That's not all at all, at all, this. I mean, if a man think that way, then it's better to listen to this show because no, having an orgasm is not, um, it's definitely not the end goal for a woman and the woman as well. I mean, if you keep looking, looking, looking for the orgasm, it means that you're not feeling in your body what is going on because there are so much more than just the orgasm. There are so much feelings that happens during the sex, actually, that, you know, it's just, that just feels and good. It's so good. Like there's the whole intimacy that we're missing out on. There, you know exactly, I mean? which also have a lot of meaning, exactly intimacy has this lot of meaning and that really helps building up the relationship even more deeper. I mean, it's not the mm -hmm. orgasm that's going to get you the, your relationship more deeper, actually. It's that intimacy that you manage to build and be okay with your partner and having this dance, you know, wherever you want to do your stuff. And it's good, you know, it's, it's, it's as important as a woman. I feel that it's as important as an orgasm. So definitely I'm not always going for that and I'm okay with that. And I'm trying to explain that as well to my husband and he's fine. I mean, it's, it's, it's fine, I mean, it's, it's done anyway. So it, it's good. I had pleasure and that's all that matters. That's it, yeah. And the closeness, sometimes you just like the closeness, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. All right. Definitely, all right. That was a very good one. Thank you so much for sharing this TV show that we're going to put in the link um, below. Uh, we're going to put uh, yeah all the information. Thank you so much. I felt that it was an amazing episode and I really wish that you learned something out of it and you're going to enjoy every moment. And have sex tonight, guys. <laughs> Let's do it. And if you have any questions, you know, if you want to know more, we are not necessarily expert on that, but we are quite open-minded definitely to to help you with you know with some questions that you may have so don't hesitate to come back to us we're more than happy to share anything um that we experience privately <laughs> all right have a good day you too thank you so much for joining us on today's episode we hope you enjoyed it and every time you listen we truly appreciate it and if you would like to follow me or uh, learn more about my work or get in contact with me, please go to my website, which is AngelaJaneCoaching.com. And if you want to know more about my work, you can go on SarahMeng.com. All the details are going to be listed in a comment below. You can also follow us on social media, Instagram or Facebook, where we are sharing our daily tips. Bye. Hope to see you soon.